the Honorable Minister of Finance and Public Service, Dr. Nigel Clark, made his uh, budget presentation in Parliament uh, on Tuesday, which was yesterday, and joins us uh, via Zoom to talk about the social and economic recovery and uh, vaccine Jamaica program and some other things. Morning, Minister. Welcome to Smile Jamaica, sir. Morning, Neville. Thank you for having me. Um, first, sir, let me tell you that I thought your presentation was absolutely amazing. One of the best I've, I've, I've seen from a finance minister, sir. So I congratulate you on that. A um, couple of things I want to talk about. Um, you said foreign exchange inflows from tourism are to fall by 74%, which has set back the country 30 years. Um, is that an exaggeration? It is not. Uh, the foreign exchange earnings for, for 2020, 21 are uh, projected to fall by 2.5 billion US dollars. So basically, in the previous year, prior to the pandemic, we earned 3.4 billion US dollars. I'm giving you rough numbers uh, from tourism inflows. Last year, we earned 874 million dollars, a fall of 2.5 billion or 74%. You have to go back 30 years to find another year where we earned so little from tourism. Yeah. How do we come out of this, sir? We're going to have to recover stronger, Neville. We're going to have to uh, day by day, month by month. It won't be overnight, but we have to recover those earnings. And, but it's important that the countries are aware of these realities and these statistics and these numbers, right? Because then we have the wrong kind of conversation if we're not. We yeah. want to be focused on the right conversation. And the right conversation now is about, uh, with, res expect with respect to, you know, US dollars, exchange rate, et cetera, et cetera, the right conversation is how do we return the inflows of foreign exchange from $900 million all the way back up to $3.4 billion where, where it was prior to the pandemic? How, how do we? Well, we're going to we're going to have to uh, ensure that we the vaccination program is, is successful, right? Because when our first our vulnerable population is vaccinated, the the measures that are necessary can be relaxed uh, because it's the vulnerable population that over that disproportionately uh, fills the hospitals and the, you know the ICU wards. Okay. Um, and then we're going to have to ensure that we. Um, push the uh, economic recovery. We have a big program for infrastructure and for uh, community renewal and urban renewal uh, throughout the country that we hope to generate jobs. Uh, but our big foreign exchange earner is certainly tourism. Tourism begins to return as our source markets are vaccinated. And we, you know, President Biden has spoken about May being the goal for the United States. The UK is fairly advanced. But we, we're going to want to ensure that once they are vaccinated and they want to travel, they, want, they need to go to a destination that they feel safe, right? So we have to have our program, uh, you know, in train as the Minister of Health has, has announced. That's going to be very, very key to our recovery. Okay. So we got a donation of 50,000 AstraZeneca vaccines from India. Um, but... You hope to get approximately 2 million Jamaicans vaccinated. How will Serve Jamaica achieve that? So, you know, Serve Jamaica, we are providing the money. Okay, so we're making it possible. Uh, out, you know, from the $33 billion dividend that we are going to receive in the first month of April, uh, $6 billion will be made available to the Ministry of Health for the procurement, the distribution, the storage, the administration of the vaccination program. So they'll have those funds. They'll be able to purchase the vaccines as long as the supply is available. Now, the Minister of Health has made public the schedule of uh, vaccine supply that he has uh, that he expects and that he has been negotiating. And that schedule would see Jamaica uh, being uh, having, you know, close to 66, 67, 70 percent of our population vaccinated within the next 12 months. And that would be enough to get what we describe or what is described as herd immunity. Yeah. But I'm responsible for the allocation of the resources uh, in this respect. Yeah. And the Ministry of Health is clearly responsible for the, uh, the vaccination program. Yeah, man, for sure. Uh, maybe surprisingly, um, you announced there will be no new taxes 
So how will these vaccines be paid for? Well, you know, we're very, you know, as I said yesterday, policy matters, right? Policy matters and good policy matters more. And I said, you know, yesterday, with God's help, we can bring about the future we want to see. We have agency as a country. You know, sometimes as uh, people who have experienced colonization and domination for hundreds of years, we think that things happen to us, right? You know, as I said yesterday in my presentation, you know the colloquial expression, man, I just saw it go. I saw the thing set, right? So we, we, we tend to believe we can't change, we can't, you know, we don't have the agency to bring about the future we want. And here's an example where that is certainly the case. Due to the policy choices that we have made as a country, uh, the Bank of Jamaica has been returned to profitability just in time. And uh, three years of profitability for, from our central bank due to the policy choices that we as a country have made to modernize and to strengthen it. Central bank made profits in 2018, 2019, and 2020, which by law, they are required to dividend to the government. So in the first week of April, we will be receiving the single largest dividend ever paid over to the central government of $33 billion. Oh, fantastic. And that $33 billion has come at the right time because our revenues have not yet recovered. And it is from that source of income that we're going to be using to uh, do a number of things that we call the Serve Jamaica program, principle of which is to provide $10.5 billion to the Ministry of Health, $6 billion in the form of vaccines. Um, sir, you also mentioned in your presentation that the um, government's revenue intake is expected to decline by $70 billion, as you said. How do you plan or do you have a plan to pump money into the economy to generate activity for recovery? Yes. So yeah, this year, this fiscal year, 2020-21, which ends on March 31st, Revenues declined by $70 billion compared with the previous year. We were fortunate this year to have an opening cash balance of $90 billion, Neville. You know, you talk about, you know, they say preparation is better than good luck. We have been building those cash reserves, this government, uh, through prudent policy, through what we call fiscal overperformance, that you set a target here fiscally and you achieve this target. And so the, the difference is a cash balance that begins to big up, build up. We privatized Wickton Wind Farm last year. We privatized Trans Jamaica Highway, and we recouped $25 billion from that. We reintegrated PCJ into its parents' ministry. We recouped $6 billion from that. And so we were building up the cash pile, and we were doing it to accelerate debt repayment. And if we accelerated debt repayment, what that would mean is that we would have more fiscal space to spend on other items. Lo and behold, you know, you can plan and plan and plan. Uh, and, and that's what we did by, har by harvesting this amount of cash uh, resources. But then COVID-19 came. But thank God we had those resources, which helped us to cushion the collapse in revenues. For the next fiscal year, um, we are expecting uh, recovery to begin. Uh, it's not going to be at the level where our revenues are going to return to pre-pandemic levels in real terms but we'll be supplemented by this one-off dividend from the central bank of 33 billion dollars which will finance uh the serve jamaica program consisting of a number of uh different uh, items that i know you're you're showing on your screen and we probably don't have time to go through each of them but anyone that you're interested in neville i can speak about in greater detail i, I wanted to ask you about the the, the banks they've offered the moratoriums or delayed paybacks on loans to organizations uh, facing difficulties um, in a year that you said is the worst economic contraction in Jamaica's history, if we don't see a quick enough recovery, what actions um, are you considering, if any, to strengthen the financial Well, you know, I am, I am moving for a quick recovery, Neville. That we, are, we have lined things up for that. I mean, clearly we're not in control of all of the variables. As I mentioned yesterday, there are uncertainties with the virus. There are risks we face, natural disaster, commodity price shocks, you know, and so on. Uh, but we are... We're, we are programming for recovery. We have the largest infrastructure program tabled in a budget ever, uh, as well as making sure that we have the vaccination program and that we have temporary employment support programs, uh, the Paint the City program, the river training program, and other programs and social support for, for a lot of people who have been affected, including 15,000 uh, uh, taxi drivers and 5,000 contract carriage 
uh, operators. And we also have the uh, conditional cash transfer program for those over 60 um, who uh, are vaccinated. We're just saying, look, you know, here's a, you don't have to, if you don't, you don't want to, we hope that you choose to. And uh, if you do, you know, there'll be a $10,000 grant that will be available as soon as the conditions allow for us to make those transfers. Okay. Uh, but, so, so, you know, so we are, for now, uh, Neville, you know, if that situation materializes, you can have me back and I can describe, you know, what we would do under those circumstances. But right now we are programming for recovery. And it's like you're playing football, Neville, you know, you're driven towards a goal. You're not thinking about missing. Right. Right. We're thinking about missing what's going to happen. You're thinking of hitting that ball in the back of the net. Right. That's exactly what we're going to do this year. We're dribbling down uh, into offensive territory, and we're going to keep the ball in the back of the net. What I mean by that is we're going to go for economic recovery to begin this year. We yeah. won't get it all done, but we're going to go for it to begin yeah. in this upcoming fiscal year, beginning on the 1st of April. Great analogy, sir. We have to go. One final question, and I probably need a quick answer. You changed the filing date, tax filing date from March 15. No, I haven't changed it yet. I'm saying that we're going to change it. Why? Yeah. Because look, think about it, Never. We've been doing this thing the same way for the longest time. But March, we get 50% of our income taxes on March 15, which is two weeks before the end of the fiscal year. The fiscal year ends on March 31st. Now, by March 15th, your expenditure is done. You've written all the checks. Right. Yeah. And they've gone on to the ministries and they're going to spend the money. And you have to sit down and wait and pray, cross your fingers, that for the next, for those two weeks, those last two weeks, the money comes in as you expect. That's right. no way to run a country. Yep. Notwithstanding the fact that we've done it like, like that for decades. In all countries that, you know, certainly in the United Kingdom, the United States, Canada, etc., their income tax date is either at the beginning of their fiscal year or in the middle of the year, okay? okay? Because then you know, you know, if we had it in the first month of the year, we would know what this take is going to be, and we have 11 months to make up. Yeah, all right. right? So, so you, want to, it, you want to move it to April 15th? We want to move it to April 15th, which will go over the fiscal year into the new fiscal year. Okay, okay. Uh, which will provide more time for people to file. But importantly for the government, it will provide more fiscal certainty. And that's what I mean, uh, Neville, that we have agency to bring about the future with God's help that we want to see. Yeah. We're not, yeah? We have as an independent and sovereign people, as the children of Marcus Garvey, of Norman Manley and Alexander Bustamante, we can bring about the future that we want to see. Yeah. We just have to pursue good policy and be disciplined about implementing good policy, even when it's difficult. We'll, we'll have you back, sir. Great job and Thank good you. to see you. Thank you, Neville. Be safe, sir. Thank you. The Honorable Minister of Finance and Public Service, Dr. Nigel Clark. All right, more and smile when we come back. Stay with us, please. Soon come.